What is up you guys, Nick here, and in today's video, we all know the topic, we all know the run-up, it's Neo Q3 Earnings Day. Whew, can you tell the excitement in my voice? I will have a long-term follow-up play to this video, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, but I wanted to get my thoughts out as quickly as possible concerning Neo's third quarter's earnings, so I apologize for the crassness of this video. Also, my girlfriend is waiting to grab drinks with me. Uh, this is the true life of a stock nerd. I'm here for you guys. What up, Becca? If you haven't already, hit that subscribe. I always keep my subscribers informed and ahead of the curve. I first told my subscribers to purchase Neo shares at $7, Solo at 2 Xpeng at 19 and a whole host of others. You don't want to miss any of those future picks. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let's get right into business. Neo's Q3. Analysts were actually predicting an EPS loss of negative 0.17, which would have actually been worse than their Q2, where they suffered a 16 cent EPS loss. Analysts were predicting this to be worse due to cost of revenue and operating expenses from the rollout of their newest vehicle, the EC6, and an increased capital investment towards R&D, and of course, another Neo shares dilution. Well, here we go. What a day. Neo continues to outperform expectations. I've been saying this all along, how great of a company they are, and how they continue to grow and exceed all analysts. I really don't think they grasp just how lucrative this company can be while not being vertically integrated. Analysts' main concern with this company was just that, that they outsource virtually everything to JAC. However, this is clearly not going to be a short-term issue. Negative 0.14 cents loss per ADS. This is going to be huge for this company. They actually outperformed by 3 cents, which in case you don't know, the stock market is actually quite a bit. Just as I had predicted and told my subscribers in my previous video, I was quite sure they were going to outperform on EPS and that they were going to be able to bring both their vehicle margins and gross margins above 10%, which is exactly what they did. They brought their vehicle margins up from 9.7 to 14.5% and their gross margin from 8.4 to 12.9%. Guys, this is absolutely incredible. I was aware this company was growing at an exponential pace, but this is just something truly special. This is a win across the entire board, really. Their vehicle sales are up 146%. Quarterly total revenues reached 666.6 million. Uh, what's going on with that number? Is that just coincidence? Who cares? I'm not superstitious. That is an incredible surge. The most important thing for this company, I have said time and time again for me, are their margins. Their quarterly vehicle margin being 14.5% and their gross margin being 12.9% is absolutely incredible. However, the stock market doesn't always react well to favorable earnings. It's actually quite odd. Sometimes analysts think a company needs to grow at a certain rate and if they don't hit that rate, well, they end up selling their shares. Like I've said, they hit it out of the park across all boards here. Their vehicle sales are up 146% year over year. Their total revenue is up 146.4% year over year. Their loss from operations operations down 60.7% year over year, their net loss down 58.5% year over year with just 154.2 million loss. There really are just too many great things to say about this company. It's a win across the board in virtually every single aspect. They are reporting strong sales from their ES8, their ES6 and their brand new EC6. They have now reached cumulative deliveries of the ES8, the ES6 and the EC6 of 63,343. I have been talking about this exponential growth for so so long now. The more vehicles you get out there, the more brand recognition you receive, the more people realize that they are a viable company, and the more people are also using their battery as a service and their new power division of the company. With more vehicles on the road, they are also able to increase the revenues through this battery as a service, which also lowers the barrier to entry point. Guys, I am so excited for this company. This quarter was either the one that I thought things would go either skyward or basically downward. And although they did reach 666 million in total revenue, regardless of that number, we're still going up, baby. They have just launched their 100 kilowatt per hour battery pack. This is going to do phenomenal things for this company and is proving that electric vehicles are the way of the future. You can now safely use an electric vehicle. This is reducing mileage anxiety. I'm sorry my voice is sounding like this, but I really am just so happy. I'm so incredibly happy for this company. I've been following them and investing in them since $3 a share. I told you guys to invest at $7. They kind of feel like my baby at this point. 
and to see just how well they've flourished and grown in such a short period of time, it really is just something special. They have a 37% higher energy density than the 70 kilowatt per hour previous battery, and they can now reach a range of 615 kilometers. As you may know, they have also completed the offering of over 100 million ADS, which were at a price of $17 USD. They are no longer short in cash and cash equivalents, and they won't be for a very long time. And by no means would I be surprised to see the share price at $100 by the end of Q2. I will have a full video explaining why that is. I'm not throwing that number out into thin air. I really do think this is feasible and possible and that their numbers can back this up. Lee Bin, the CEO and founder, goes on to state that they are pleased that they have launched the battery as a service in the 100 kilowatt per hour battery pack and that they are thrilled with the battery swap technology that will make battery as a service so lucrative and beneficial for this company. This was a major risk this company took from the onset, going hundreds of millions into the red to make this infrastructure to allot this early capital investment to this battery swapping technology is proving so invaluable for this company. It was a major risk and and they are seeing how well this is playing out. Especially with the uncertainty in the coming economy, people may be hurting for discretionary income and battery as a service pretty much alleviates some of the pain and some of the pinch on people's wallets by lowering the cost to entry. This is lowering the barrier to entry point, allowing more people to be able to afford a luxury electric vehicle. Because they receive money on every single battery swap and every single battery rental, this is gonna exponentially increase their bottom line in the coming quarters and years. Lee Bin had previously talked about the supply strain they were unfortunately running into during the summer months, and it's looking like a lot of this has been alleviated, and they are smoothing out their JAC headquarter process line. Their manufacturing efficiency is clearly up, and the vehicle margin has increased to 14.5%. This is incredible, and if they weren't a luxury electric vehicle company, they wouldn't be able to hit these figures. So the fact that their vehicles do cost quite a bit, they're not cheap. This really helps out their bottom line and it's helping them exponentially grow. They have achieved positive cash flow from operating activities for the second sequential quarter. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the brand awareness is driving this company. They are so hot right now, so many people are aware of them. People are loving their company, their brand, and their vehicles. They really are carving out a sector of the market for themselves and it seems that it's going to be extremely difficult for other companies to catch up to them at this point. They are speeding away from the pack, that's a pun, at an incredibly rapid pace. Total revenues are up 21.7% from just Q2 of 2020. We see similar numbers with their vehicle sales, an increase of 22.4% from second quarter. So what's going to happen with their share price? Should you buy or should you wait? Well, I hope you've been taking my advice for, let's say, the past six months and have bought in shares before this happened. However, if you haven't, you have not missed the boat. There is so much future promise to this company and albeit they are still relatively unknown. After hours, they have gone into the red. And you know what? I will be buying additional shares tomorrow. However, this is not unusual as many investors are either profit taking or getting out early. Even though they have beat expectations, people are still selling off. It's gonna happen. The market can lag good news coming out of earnings calls. This happens to very hype companies where investors think they should be growing faster than they are. However, I'm not listening to any of that. If they are in the red tomorrow, I will be picking up a bulk amount of shares. I've been saying it for a while now. I believe in the true long-term value of this company. I believe they will continue to succeed, continue to outperform expectations. I'm not sure analysts know how lucrative battery as a service is going to be for them. They already have their infrastructure in over 60 Chinese cities, and there are rumors that other companies may mold their batteries to fit this battery swapping technology, in which case NEO would have a share of each single battery swapping payment. They are clearly able to hit huge margins, even while outsourcing to JAC. And this is just truly incredible. They are doing this all while not being vertically integrated. And although I do think they will need to eventually have their own factory, I do not think this is any longer a short-term problem. Anyways, I will have a full video going over this entire third quarter's earnings and give my deep thoughts after critical analysis, but I just wanted to give you guys an update. I am thrilled with this. I could not be happier, honestly. Neo to the moon as always. Neo gang, we've been there since day one. Thanks for the continued support, everyone. Subscribe if you haven't yet. You don't want to miss any future picks. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. We love that bad boy. Anyways, I will see you guys all later. Neo to the moon. Cheers.